Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Um, you might recognize Poppy behind me. We did a, um, a video on doing an inspection on Poppy. Poppy is an RV that uh, one of our employees, Trisha, and her husband, Sid, purchased. And um, so we've been having fun making a playlist with Poppy. During the inspection, I believe we, we broke that inspection video up into two parts. Um, the first part, it was around the 45 minute, somewhere 45 minute mark. We were testing the lighting of it, of Poppy here, and we determined that the rear right light when that right blinker went on it was actually the backup light that was lighting up so um, the idea was hey let's bring you along and let's try to figure out what's wrong with that so to save everybody some time what i've done is um, trying to figure out where the wiring goes um, we've done another video of poppy you can see it on poppy's playlist where i installed a new breakaway up here in front and the wiring the seven-way wire kind of goes into the frame disappears and honestly i'll be honest it took me probably a half hour of crawling around on poppy to figure out where those wires come out and um, i'll bring you inside and i'll show you where but that was like where do these wires go <laughs> and um, so anyway they come out they, they stay in the the tube the, the rectangular uh, two by four tubing all the way to the back of of poppy here you got to take a wall out and then they come out of the frame behind the wall so um, that's where they come out so just wanted to say I've done a lot of digging on here to save everybody some time. So what I want to do now is I'm going to show you in the front half, we'll recreate the problem that Poppy was having, and um, then we'll get busy getting that fixed. All right, here we go. Okay, so I've moved down underneath, um, right in the front of the RV where all the connections make. Now we're going to be talking about the seven way. The seven way is this, this is the female side, or this is the male part, this is the trailer part, and then this would be the, the female side this would be the side that would be connected to a tow vehicle so when the tow vehicle um, turns on left blinker right blinker hits your brakes and all that kind of stuff you're basically energizing different pins within you're sending 12 volts through those pins um, and then they get translated into the connector and then they send 12 volts off to the, the circuits um, if you're doing your brake then that's more of a proportional thing where depending on how hard it, the different brake controllers but you're going to hit your brake controller and it's going to send a varying voltage um, through the brake pin and if you're locking up your brakes it might send 12 volts to those brakes but if you're just slowing down it might be you know zero to 12 volts um, basically what you're doing on most RVs, some of them do hydraulic, but a lot of these type of RV uh, travel trailers and cargo trailers and things like that, you're basically engaging a magnet and uh, you're creating an electromagnetic field. It's rubbing against the drum of the wheel and the more of a magnetic field, the more it starts to grab and then it engages the, uh, the calipers that are pushing against the, the, the drum, okay? We're not gonna get into all that, but that's the, the voltage, that's the circuit part of this. So when your trailer is connected to your seven way, all those pins inside of there are what is basically giving you 12 volts to turn on lights, blinking, blinking, blinking. Okay, so you can actually test your, your tow vehicle uh, there's a, adapters. I don't have one with me. I could probably go get one, but uh, you could just plug these little adapters in and there's little lights that light up and, and show you stuff. So we know, okay, so, so we've established that. Great, wonderful. Let's move to the next point. When I became an RV technician working at a dealership around 2011, uh, we were getting several, well, more than several, we were getting a lot of RVs that would come into my bay because they're, they're, the wiring was not correct. Um, and whether it was on the tow vehicle or the trailer, well, I never got the tow vehicle side, I'd always get the trailer side. And so um, what I'm gonna do is I'll break away and what we'll do is we'll together we'll go visit a website called eTrailer. Now eTrailer does a fantastic job educating their customers on on how a lot of things work, the different appliance, um, appliances, different parts, and what works and what doesn't work. So eTrailer is a great site. I love going to their site. We we shop from them, and I'd recommend everybody get parts from them and everything like that. They do such a good job of of training their their customers on on different things. And one of the sites I want to take you to is their uh, seven-way schematic okay uh, there is so much discussion on the right way to wire a seven-way and if you are so fixated on the color of a wire being a certain circuit um, then that is the incorrect way to approach this and when I share this e-trailer thing I'll just make a break and we'll go over look look at that together you will see that inside of the seven-way the locate the, 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 the location of the points 
will always, this one will always be left, this one will always be right, then you got marker lights and 12 volts and then brakes and ground. The pins stay this, the, the, the function of the pin stays the same, but the coloring of the wire will change depending on if you're going with SAE standard or RV standard. So I think that would be like a cargo trailer would have one standard and an RV would have a different standard. But there are some folks in the industry that are, I mean, they will live and die that no, brown is this and green is that. And um, you're a color racist, <laughs> okay? Don't judge a wire by the color, judge the wire by the circuit, okay? So that goes with wiring in RVs, that goes with people, that goes with everything. Don't judge a wire by its color, don't judge a person by their color, okay? Moving on. So the circuits stay the same, but the color of the wire changes, okay? So let's take a moment, let's go over to each trailer, and what we'll do is we'll just kind of share what I'm talking about and you'll see that, okay? So let's do that now. Okay, folks, so we're over here on eTrailer.com, and what I'm going to do for you folks is I'll take that URL up at the top, and I'm going to copy that URL and put it directly in the description of this video so you can land on this page yourself. And what I want you to do is down here, I want you to take a look at this diagram that eTrailer has provided for us. And so I want to do a, a, a snip of this so I can draw on it and mark it up. But... But this is what I was saying. Each other does a really great job of educating their customers. And um, you got, uh, who's that? Jameson C is the one that answered this question and provided this, this little image for us. So let's transition into a program that I can actually draw and mark up on. And then I'll make my point and we'll jump back on Poppy. So I've basically taken that image and just kind of made it a little bit larger. And I brought it into a program that I can kind of mark up. And what I want to draw your attention to is the standards, uh, or we call them standards, but here we have the, the seven-way traditional standard, here we have the seven-way RV standard, and over here we even have a seven-way heavy-duty standard. They all have seven pins on them, and um, let's just ignore the, the agricultural heavy-duty for right now, and let's just focus on what's, what's going on with this RV and the tr traditional. Unfortunately, when they came out with these two standards, they did not consult with me. They did not consult with you. And these two standards kind of developed on their own without respect to each other. And, uh, so you've heard me say in several of my videos, even I just said it just a few minutes ago, that the circuits stay the same on the pins, but the colors of the wires change. And you've also heard me say, don't judge a wire by the color of its jacket and don't judge a person by the color of their skin. You gotta know the character of the person. You gotta know the what's going on inside of that wire. So let's just take a look here between these two standards. What's going on? Okay, so here we have, I could go the top or bottom, but this is more clear. So I'm just gonna toggle between this upper left one and the one in the middle on the top, okay? So we're going to go through this really quick, and I think within 10 seconds you're going to see what, it, what I'm talking about. But let's just let's just plant ourselves here for a second because there's a few more things I want to share with you. Here on the upper left, I have 12-volt power. That's a black wire. Here on the left, I have 12-volt power. That's a black wire. Here on the right, I have tail and run lights. That's a brown wire. Here on the right, I have tail and run lights. That's a green wire. Uh-oh. Brown wire, green wire. They're both tail and running, tail and running, okay? Over here on the left most pin it is a right turn and stop over on this left it is a right turn and stop and they are both well one is a green and one is a brown wait a minute i thought these greens see how these greens and browns just changed greens and browns well let's keep on going here because we've got uh, reverse lights here is a purple and reverse lights is brown and then we have left turn lights on the right pin is a left turn that's a yellow here we have the left turn is a red okay and then ground is white and then brake is blue <clears throat> so a couple years ago i came out with a video showing you the trick on how to remember these things so you have you know uh, ground and marker those are up high up top and then you have the left turn the right turn and then you have brake and ground and so that's pretty much the same across but the colors change and i think you see that so this is what would happen. People would come in and they're going to wire their RV with this standard. And they go to turn on their left blinker and the, the tail and running lights would start blinking. And uh, then I knew, oh, that's what it is. But they don't stop there. A lot of times they would just make a big mess. Um, and then they'd put their reverse lights on or their left turn lights or reverse lights were coming on. This It's just madness. But if you, if you look at this, it's like, oh, I understand. So... 
I never want to make any assumptions. And so when I come across these kinds of problems, you know what? It's a whole lot easier. Let's see if I can draw this for you. It's a whole lot easier. I just cut that wire right there. I just cut it. And I take my meter and I need to put my red lead on the black wire. And I'm going to put my, my black lead on the ground wire. And I'm going to put my meter in 12 volts DC. And I expect to see 12 volts right there on my meter. If I see 12 volts on there, again, I've got seven wires to figure out. I've just solved the riddle of two of those wires. I know my ground is good and I know my 12 volts is good. Okay, so that's the first test that I'm going to perform. And then I'm going to label these wires. And I know that this wire is in fact ground. And I know that this wire is in fact, I said ground. I'm going to know that this wire is in fact 12 volts and this wire is in fact ground. So I'm good there. Well, now that I know that I have a known good 12 volts, I'm going to take this green wire and I'm just going to touch it to the black wire. And I like to use those WAGO connectors. You could put your wires in there and snap them together. And then I'm going to walk around that RV and I'm going to find out if when I energize my green wire, are my tail lights going to turn on or is my right turn and stop going to turn on? And knowing that right there, I have just figured out, ah, how this thing's wired. But once I figure out what my green wire is, I need to label that wire. It's important that I label that wire, so I'm going to disconnect that wire and I'm going to slide a little label on it or something just to let me know what I'm dealing with there. And then I will take my black wire and I'm going to run down to the red in this instance and I'm going to walk around the RV. Oh, okay, that's the left turn. We don't have a red over here. They do over here. We'll talk about him in just a second. And so then I basically connected the red wire to 12 volts constant and I'm just going to walk around until I see a light that's steady burning. And um, so now I got a light that's steady burning. Aha, now I know I'm good to go. I've just identified another wire. I'm solving a puzzle here. And then I will take my um, 12 volts and I'm going to connect it to, what is this, right and turn. Okay. And basically I'm going to take my brown, connect it to black, find out what's going on over here. And I'm going to find out, okay, that's right turn. I think you guys see, I don't know that I need to spend much more time explaining how I do this. I think I'm going to have to do the same thing when I get on Poppy. You're going to see me do it. I'll also check my reverse lights and I will check my uh, electric brake and make sure that my electric brake's working. So once I've done that and I've labeled my wires, now I am ready to actually affect a repair. Okay, I now know that there's things that I can do to make that repair work. Uh, just for fun, we talked about two different standards here. And let's just take a look over here because you guys may come across this on um, agricultural trailers, you know, uh, tractor trailer trucks, things like that. I don't work on those too much, but let's just take a second. On our seven way that we're familiar with here in the RV industry or the cargo trailer industry, ground is on the bottom. Look, their ground is up on the top. So that's different. They've got clearance and side markers. We don't have clearance and side markers over here at all. Um, we do have running and tail lights, and then here we have tail and running lights. So they're color is going to be brown for that. And so they're going to borrow that from the traditional side. Okay. They have an auxiliary ABS power, which is blue. We don't have that. Our blue is break. They're going to have a, a right turn. They're going to use green for their right turn and hazard. Here we're going to have right turn and stop for green. So again, they're using the traditional for that. Uh, then they have a left turn and hazard. Here we have a left turn and stop. So, whoa, where's our stop lights come from? Their stop lights are going to be a red wire down here. So they don't have a brake controller. We don't have an auxiliary ABS. And um, our stop lights and left turn and right turn are all integrated. They have a separate stop circuit. So just understand that there are three different um, standards here, but we can't assume that the wire coloring is, is going to be what the circuit is. I think you'll get in trouble, and that's why they would always come to my bay. Um, I kind of giggled into myself when I was reading all the comments from that video that I put together where people are saying, I don't know what I'm talking about and, and just going on and on and just trashing me. And I'm like, um, okay, well, hey, I love you guys, but exhibit A right here, you don't know what you're talking about. So, um, and if, if there was a standard, then, then there's a lot of money that I would not be making because they're the ones that are making all the mistakes and they scratch their head and bang their head against the wall. And I'm sitting back there just smiling and laughing. You say what you want about me. And guess what? I know that there's a difference between this and they apparently don't. And I'm the one that gets called in to fix it all the time. So let's jump back over. I see um, now that we've seen that there's two different standards. That's what I wanted to share with you. 
We see this over on the eTrailer website. Let's jump over on Poppy and see if we can't figure out what's going on with her and, and see if there's a problem up here in the, in the front. Maybe they changed some wires around. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so I hope that added value to you and you can see how the colors of the wires, those browns and those greens, um, yellows, purples, they change with respect to the standard, okay? But the location of the circuits stays the same. All right, I really wanted to stress that point. Um, there's, um, I, I put a video out, gosh, quite a while ago. We'll make a link to that other video um, on the um, the seven way. And it's funny if you read those comments, there are, there are folks that are just really upset with me and mad at me because I don't know what I'm talking about, but I submit to you, they don't know what they're talking about, okay? So um, exhibit A would be the e-trailer video we just looked at together. So anyway, enough with that. Now, now when we did Poppy, like I said, we found a problem with her wiring, okay? Poppy's a girl. Uh, Trisha and Sid decided to name Poppy a girl. So uh, now here's a box that I'm gonna be using, okay? Now this was a box, I call it the RV light show. That was just something I did for fun. Uh, my background is electrical, uh, industrial automation, industrial engineering. And uh, so what I have inside of here is a little programmable relay, it doesn't matter all that kind of stuff. I'm not making these for anybody. This was something I made just for myself. It was a known good test source. I knew when I plugged this into a trailer, regardless of what the tow vehicle was, that I knew that this was right, okay? And that I could wire a trailer based off of this, and I knew that my wiring in that trailer was right. And this has helped in literally hundreds of, of trailer wiring jobs okay so i won't make this one for you but i am making these for you guys i'm uh, a lot of folks we did another video on the two second on off switch and uh, that's basically this switch right here it's an electric brake i think is what it says there yeah, electric brake. And basically it turns two seconds on off. So I am in the process of making those. Probably by the time this video comes out, those might be available in our online store. Um, it's just a dedicated two second on off and it's gonna give you voltage and current and all kinds of other fancy things. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this ugly, big, nasty box I made, gosh, in 2011. Um, hey, it works great. The ones I'm gonna be making for you guys are gonna be a lot nicer with a lot more features than just toggle switches. But this has worked a lot. Uh, most recently, I put a groovy little light on it down there. Um, the light's gonna tell me that there's, I'm getting power. So on your seven way, remember we were talking about the seven ways. One of the, t one of the pins coming from your tow vehicle should be 12 volts hot. Um, different manufacturers of vehicles wire those different ways. Sometimes it's hot all the time. Sometimes it's only hot when your vehicle's running. I have no control over what the tow vehicle is giving me, but typically you should have one of these pins that's hot at 12 volts when you are engines running. Okay, so if one of these pins is hot all the time, then when I connect my trailer to it, that means that I now have 12 volts going directly through here. And the way we wire the trailer side is that's what's gonna be charging our battery. That is to say, as you're traveling down the road, if your trailer is connected to your seven way on your tow vehicle, you should have 12 volts going all the way in to charge your battery, okay? Um, so let me scooch back a little bit. So I have a little bit more slack here. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna take my trailer seven way and plug it into here. And, uh, oh, that's interesting. So I put that little light in there. Uh, see this little light that lights up? I just did that. Uh, now, interestingly, when I connect this, see how it went away? I'm squeezing tight and I'm pushing. There's a, so what I'm doing here is I'm just wiggling this seven way together and so there's something going on inside that seven way. Would you agree? You see that light lighting up and not lighting up. Um, so this part looks fine. Um, and even this part looks fine. So I might lubricate that electronic parts cleaner, but um, what I'm gonna try to do is plug it in so I get a light lit up right there. Let's see what we have to do to make that happen. Right, it was doing it and now it's not. I'm just doing it, there it goes. Okay, so the light's on, right there. Okay, so that tells me that my my little, I'm using a Siemens logo, if you must know. Um, a Siemens logo, uh, those logos are cool, man. And the ones they're coming out with now, I have a web server inside of them. And um, I've connected my phone to them. Um, anyway, old Darren. So I have a light lit up on my display here that tells me that the power, if I'm getting 12 volts from my tow vehicle 
and it's feeding the battery, then wouldn't it also be a correct statement that if I'm feeding my battery, it's also coming back up this way? They don't put diodes in these things, okay? So it's just a home shot. If I'm connected to my seven-way on my tow vehicle, it goes to the battery. And if it's going to the battery, shouldn't it also come back up this way? So because this lights up, that tells me that the battery circuit in my seven-way from my trailer is intact and is correct. Now we did establish there's a loose connection somewhere in here. I will, I'll take a moment, look inside of my connection. Um, I'll, I'll do that to figure that out. But anyway, we know that we're getting 12 volts and that's a good thing. So when we were doing our test, um, what I can do with this is I can go all on and I think I just saw these lights so behind me light up. Let's see here. Yeah, you can see them light up. And uh, the one over there that you can't see is on. So we checked all our all on lights. And uh, what I'll probably do, I just wanted you to see what I'm going to be doing up front, then I'll probably sit you guys up and back and I'll be telling you what I'm doing and you'll be seeing the results. The front half is easy, it's just the two amber lights, one over there, one over here. The rest of the show is on the back. So then I've got manual mode where I can go left blinker and if you listen for the click, it's a slow, one second on, one second off. Right is faster. Okay, so I'd made left blinker slow and right blinker fast. And that's kind of helped sometimes. I just know that right's fast and left is slow. And uh, so when I go to the back, I can kind of just real quickly see if they're blinking fast or slow. I've got running lights, which will just turn on all the running lights. You see they lit up right there. And then um, brake lights is basically left and right together. Um, and then I've got my electric brake. It's just two second on off. Um, so that's in the manual mode. I could go to the all on mode, which turns every light on. And when I used to do PDIs, that was great. I could just walk around looking for burned out bulbs. Um, or you might also see me here in a minute. I'm gonna go to the light show. I turn that this way. You hear the thing clicking. I believe the, pay, the, the pattern is left, 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 right, 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 break, 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 marker, 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 pause, left, 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 right, 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 break, you know, it, it, so, it, so I could stand in the back and just kind of watch this thing and know that it's right, okay? So when I did PDIs, I'd come here, go to all on, walk around, look for my light bulbs. I go to light show, make sure that everything's blinking the way it's supposed to be. And then during the PDIs, you jack up your wheels, put your brake check on, spin your tire, see if they lock up, lock up, lock up. Great, okay, next task. So with that, now you understand what I'm gonna be doing in the front and I'll be telling you what I'm doing and let's see what's going on in the back. And let me turn that off. And um, let's get busy fixing this thing, okay? So, okay, so I got the brake check on. We're gonna go left, 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 right, right, right. I said brake check, I mean light show. Um, and then we got brakes, 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 marker lights, marker lights, marker lights, pause. Let's go through that again. Left, left, left. Right, 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 Mark, uh, brakes, 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 and marker lights, marker lights, marker lights. So from this mode of the light show, you can see that the right blinker is turning on my reverse, um, my reverse lights, okay? So we have a wiring problem here. And so what I'm gonna do, I'll go to the front. Everything's working fine except for the right blinker okay so i'm going to turn off put it in manual mode and just go to right so that was that toggle switch and now remember right blinks fast so we're going to come over here to right and we'll see that the right blinker is blinking weirdly so now you see the problem now let's fix it what I'll do now is I'll bring you to the inside and I'll show you how some of these wires get run. It's maddening, but I won't spend too much time on that because mileage may vary. Your RV may not be wired to anything like this. So I'm gonna leave it in this mode and then let's go take a look on the inside. Okay, so in the front, the seven-way wire, the big wire jacket goes directly into the frame and we don't see it again. And it took me a while to figure this out, but I've, there's a water tank here. I've had to move it out of the way. I've had to take this wall back a little bit to fish around inside of the RV and find the wiring. It turns out that tucked way back behind here, there is a hole in the frame where the wires come out. Nice and convenient. Okay, so um, let me grab them all. There we go. Okay, I got all the wires. And so here's all these wires that come out of the frame and they have them where they plug into this plug right here. So what we have in here would be left, right, marker. Um, I don't know, I don't know what the other one is. Maybe a ground, I don't know. We haven't, I haven't taken my meter to it yet. So 
we can assume that the wires at this point are correct. They're sending the correct signals. Okay. So left, I'm on the right, I'm on the mm, left hand side. So the left blinker is back behind here. The right blinker is over on the other side. So um, what we could do, I don't know if you guys filming a shot here, but somebody has been in here and been playing around with all these wires. I see these wire nuts um, tape. Somebody has put on a battery monitor thing. It's got some loose wires on it. Um, just some questionable wire nut type stuff. So we're going to, and I see some wire numbers. So somebody has been in here doing some work on this and, and that's fine, but it's got some issues. Um, we're going to clean that up. So up in here, we do have several wires that I've got my hand on. And um, so somewhere the problem is here. Now, I've stuck my head up in here and I can take the camera and stick it up in there. I might make the wire fix here and not on the outside. And the reason for that is if, again, if I stick my head in here, pardon the back of my head, they don't give you a whole lot of room back there. And it looks like everything's riveted. So, um, and I can even see where a brown wire was placed into a white wire. So, <clears throat> We'll be making our diagnosis right in this area. Okay, so the first thing, let's get you guys set up so that you're like right up in here. And I'm gonna be taking my meter and I'm gonna be piercing into some of these wires and seeing what the voltage is telling me it is, okay? Okay, so I've repositioned everybody. Um, I've got all this taken apart. And so these are the wires here, all these wires are the ones that are coming out of the frame of the RV, okay, uh, down in that little hole there. I got this big black wire, which is coming over here to my battery. And remember I had said earlier that one of these wires is going to be connected to the battery. Well, that's this big black wire. We see him with a big wire nut. Now we're going to clean up some of this wire nut stuff, but we got to work with what we got. So that leaves a brown, a red, a green, and a gray. Okay, so we'll just go right here, brown, red, green, and gray. What I have, I'm gonna unplug that. <clears throat> what I've looked at here um, is the red is the left blinker, brown is the right blinker, green is my marker lights, and gray is my auxiliary backup lights. Okay, so that's what we have here, okay? Um, so let us take what we're getting from the seven way. These are the wires that I'm getting from the seven way. They come rec directly out of the frame. So let's see if the signal we're getting to this point here is correct. Because if it's correct here, then we know we have a wiring problem on the RV. But if it's not correct here, then there's a problem up front. So um, let me get a meter. And here, let me get my leads set up here. Uh, I need a ground. Okay, let's do that. So I'm in the habit, I've got this little guy, I'm in the habit of using what the circuit thinks is ground. Now I can ground to the frame of the RV, but maybe there's a broken wire. So this white wire here is one that is um, the ground for our OEM lighting. So let's plug that into ground, okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to reconnect these. And from the inside, let me peek. Yep, I can, through the inside, I can see through a little crack there that the, uh, um, the right blinker is blinking quickly. All right, so we're going to plug this into our meter here. I'm going to put my meter into DC mode. I'm going to run DC voltage. And let's find the other end of this. Okay. So, meter is in DC mode, and I'm connected in, and let's go for the back side of this. So, one of these four circuits should be blinking quickly because that's my, my right blinker. Now, right should be brown, so let's go right into brown and take a look at what we got. I like going in from the back side of the circuit. I got nothing, okay? I don't expect anything on green. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm get okay. I've got it here on the gray wire. Okay, so what I'm going to do is it's going so quickly my meter can't keep up. So I'll go min max. 
Okay, so my ma my my min is point, max is twelve. Okay, so uh, it looks like the problem here, if you can see the meter jumping around, the the right blinker, it's it's coming in on the the backup light. So the light in the back is doing what it's being told to do. It's being told. In other words, this brown wire here should be the one that is making my blinker blink. But instead, they have the gray wire that's making my blinker blink, and that is why our backup lights are working. So with that information, let's... The problem is not here. The problem is not in our light. The problem is not in the bulb. The problem is not in the fixture. The problem is in the seven-way up front. So let's move our party back up to the front of this thing. And um, so we're at one end of the wiring here. Let's go to the other end of the wiring back up front and see if we can figure out how all this is tied in, how it's all, how does it get from that seven way mail connector on the trailer? How does it get from there to here? Because somewhere there's a splice and I'm thinking we're gonna find the problem where they made the splice. So, and then we'll leave this open to check it back. So let's regroup up in the front. But it looks to me like the problem is not here. Uh, the, they're sending, from the front of, this, of the pigtail, they're sending 12 volts to this gray wire and not the brown wire. So maybe somebody who did this, the wires are so close to color that maybe they just made a, made a mistake there. Also, the other thing I noticed on that front plug, remember how it's got a loose connection? Um, I'll show you when I get to the front, but that, that plug's got a nice fancy feature to it where it's got some lights that light up on it and the auxiliary is lighting up and it should be the battery. So let's look at that. So there may be a problem on the connection up in the front. So let's relocate up in the front. I'll leave all this open because we might need to come back here. Okay, I'm back up underneath this thing. I could roll this in, but it's gonna interfere with me being able to get it out. One of the things I wanna show you is they have this fancy um, pigtail. You'll see a light that's lit up on this thing. That light tells me that the AX auxiliary is illuminated. So I have TM, TL, BU, um, EB, RT, and AX. Um, I'm curious. AX to me would be my reverse backup lights, maybe. I don't know, because that's auxiliary. Um, TM is marker lights. Uh, TL is uh, left turn. RT is right turn, EB is electric brake, and BU, I would assume, is battery. So they give me six lights, and then the seventh one would be ground. So I guess what I'd rather see is the BU lit up, not the AX lit up. Uh, and that might explain a little bit about why we're having some, some wiring shorts on this. So this looks like this was a, an assembly that they purchased and I looked at it and right here, there's some electrical tape where it's taped up. So what I wanna do, I think our problem is right here. Whoever bought this and put this on and spliced it right here, I think that's where the problem is. So we're going to, uh, now I just made this nice and pretty from that other video with the uh, breakaway. Uh, get my tool bag closer, right out of reach. There we go, okay. Um, okay, so, in fact, I'll tell you what, let me go one more. I got plenty of those tie wraps. Okay. Okay, so this whole assembly, um, this is the thing that's got our light on it, but this whole assembly is taped up right in there. So I think our problem is here. Okay, so let's take that apart and take a look. So here's all the wires that I see inside the RV right there. So let's just get, um, I'm just gonna get a, a blade and just kind of cut this uh, tape. See what we see? Should be very revealing. Now, I see they've used butt splices, but I would prefer the butt splices that actually uh, heat shrink closed. Okay, so let's see what we got here. And um, yeah, okay, I see the problem. Um, so here, here's our problem right here. Here's the problem right here. They've got the brown wire of the seven-way going to the gray wire of the RV, 
they've got the yellow wire of the seven way going to the brown wire of the RV. And so that's where our problem is in this splice right here. So basically I'm gonna basically cut all these off, clean them up and put the heat shrink kind on it. And um, that should fix everything. Now, the other thing I'm curious about, so yay, we, we've found the problem with the wiring of the RV. It's, it's in this splice right here. Um, the fact that that light is lit up right there, I wanna see which one of these is hot. Um, where's my, okay. Because the AX to me means auxiliary and usually the auxiliary is a yellow wire. So I wanna see if the yellow wire is hot or so, something's just not right. Maybe AX, AX is battery, but I don't know. It just seems strange to me. So let's see, I'm gonna just tap into it with these guys right here. So let's tap into yellow. Why am I going into yellow? Because yellow to me means auxiliary. And uh, they're saying that that light lit up right there is aux. Okay, so I'm tapping into yellow and I just need a ground. Um, well, here, I'll just, I'll tap into what they're calling ground. There we go, okay. And let's get our meter right there. And let's just, another thing I love about my test lead. All right, we're gonna plug into here. So if, which, which one of these wires is 12 volts that's giving me that light? The AX is lit up, which should be yellow. So let's see if that is the one. And I have zero, okay, zero volts. So therefore, um, let's go to the big black one, which I think it's gonna be the big black one. And um, because at the other end of this thing, the big black one had, um, it was connected directly to the battery. And uh, what that would mean, there it is, 13. Okay, so we've just confirmed, okay, so we can take all this off, that the AX, let's see if you guys can see that. Um, let me get, there's a glare, I'll pan it. See how it says AX? And you see the other ones there, and then on this side, you got the names. I, I've got a glare, I don't know if you guys can make that out. So I guess AX means 12 volts power, is what that would mean. So I've got uh, marker lights, left turn, right turn, electric brake, BU. Um, what would BU be? Hmm. So here would be a curious thing. I wanna know this yellow wire, I believe, is our, um, so what I wanna do, let me do a continuity test on this. Uh, so I'm just going to pick red here, and red here, what am I doing? Hold on, I need this to go here, okay. Ah, come here. Okay, so I'm gonna do a continuity test on my meter. Uh, change my leads around, hold on. Because I am really curious here. Okay, putting the meter in continuity, which is a beep, beep, beep mode. And therefore, when I touch these two together, they'll beep like that, hear that? Okay, so I'm on the yellow wire here and I'm just gonna go around until I, it should be this one here. Nope. There it is. So that's interesting. He's he's coming in on the left. That's very interesting. Okay. Uh, so he's yellow. So brown. So if my theory is correct, this brown wire should be the leftmost terminal. Uh, so I'm gonna tap into left here. And uh, let's see, plug you in. Continuity beep, please. There it is. So this one should beep? Yeah, okay. So I'm on the plug, if, I've, if you watched your video, I've got the little thin thing at the top right here and I'm on the brown circuit and brown is the one here, that, that's your mark, that's your turn. The other turn, oh, that's interesting. Hold on. There's a wiring issue going on here. 
You know what? Every one of these is... Every one of these is beeping. So now I'm listening for the beeps. I want to read the, the number. Zero. Zero. Yeah, that's a short. Okay, so there's some weird things going on here. So here's what I, here's how I want to fix this. We've established that the problem is is here with these the the right blinker turning on the marker light. Uh, we've established that. So here's how we're going to do this. Okay. Um, so I, in my brain, I just flipped a switch in my brain. You may have seen that smoke may have come out. This is the kind of stuff that would come to me when I was working on these things. Okay. I don't want to assume anything that they've done is correct, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this out. <clears throat> now we're pretty sure that this big black one is gonna be 12 volts hot. So because it's 12 volts hot, let me just keep them safe. I'm just gonna take a Wago connector. I'm not even gonna strip it back. Uh, so I can get him in there. No, nope, I need to strip it back a little bit. Um, cause this one's the one that's going to be hot. It's going directly to the battery. I'd like there to be a fuse right here. I put the circuit breaker fuse back here, but that's protecting the battery. I did this fuse back here when I did the breakaway. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to put this guy on here to keep him honest. Now I want to see if that's 12 volts hot. So this video might go into a bonus round. Um, where's my meter back over here. Okay. So I need to prove that that's 12 volts hot. Um, where this video is gonna go from this point forward is you're gonna see me recreate this circuit to know that it's a known good circuit. Okay, that's what we're gonna do going forward. Um, I need to... So I know I've got a good ground over here somewhere. Right here, I know that's a known good ground. And put the meter in 12 volts. I need to prove I'm not going to assume anything. I need to prove that that is 12 volts. There it is. No? Yep. Okay. So I've just proven one of my circuits. I've proven that the big black wire is 12 volts hot. Okay. We've proven that. Now I'm just going to cut all these others off. And what do I need to do now? I need to prove them, don't I? I need to prove that they go where I expect them to go so I can recreate this. So if I were to, if you were to bring your RV to me and it was doing this strange stuff like this, um, I thought I could get away with just making that one change, but I don't want to assume anything now, okay? So what we're gonna do now is, um, strip all these back. I'm pretty 99.9% .9 sure this big white one is gonna be ground. We're pretty sure blue is gonna be break but I'm not gonna assume you gotta prove it or else you're just fighting yourself and then you get everything done. And um, okay, so we know, here we go. We know that this guy here is 12 volts hot, right? So what we need to do is let's test green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run around and I expect that to light up when I turn on green. Yep, okay, so the green is my marker lights. I've just proven that. Green is marker lights, okay? Um, I would probably benefit from making a note. I'll tell you what, let me go grab a sheet of paper. But you see what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be walking all over the place. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do and save everybody some trouble. I am going to prove to me, I've got a known good 12 volt source right here and I've just proven that green is marker light. And I need to go to the back of the RV, but I'm gonna prove what red is. I'm gonna connect red right now red is connected because isn't it true that if I, I'm sitting 12 volts back to something, okay? So I've got a known good 12 volt here. So I'm gonna put red on it with my known 12 volt and I'm gonna go to the back, I'm gonna prove what red feeds and then I'm gonna label it, okay? And, um, and I'm gonna prove all of these. So I'm gonna go do several things. I'm gonna get my label maker and we're gonna put the labels on here and we're gonna label these things up, do it right. And um, so when I get back, I'll have my label, label maker and we'll be making what these things say. So, um, stand by, I'll be back. Okay, so what I've done, you'll see here, I've taken the time to label all these wires. I don't know if you can see them all, but anyway. Um, I don't know, 
It doesn't look like you can see my numbers. It doesn't matter. Anyway, what did I do to do that? I've established that I've got a good 12 volt on this big guy. And then I just connected all these other ones and walked around the RV finding out what exact circuit does that energize. So we've got our right, our left, our marker, our backup. I think that's over here what I determined. Where is he guy? Where's this guy? The thing here that says BU, I think that's backup. BU would make sense to be backup. Um, so therefore AX would be my charge circuit. So uh, TM marker lights, LT left turn, RT right turn, BU backup, um, EB electric brake. So AX would be my 12 volt. Okay, I would like to see that say 12 instead of AX because AX to me would be the BU backup. Anyway, so so what we've got here is I've just labeled all these wires. Okay, so now we know, and anybody that comes behind me is gonna know where these wires go for the circuits, okay? So now what we need to do is take my known good um, source here and um, plug it in. I need to get a good um, battery source. Remember we had a loose connection on this thing, so that might be a time to, to check that. So this is where on the box I gave myself an auxiliary power plug. I'm going to need to do that because what I want to do is give me 12 volts here, turn this thing on and go manual and flip these switches. And then at the other end of this is where I will be getting 12 volts coming in on that. And uh, I don't think I'm going to label these. I'm just going to stamp them off. And as I determine what circuit that is, I will then take my heat shrinks, uh, crimp and seals and basically connect it. Okay. So that's what I'll do. Save everybody some time. This video looks like it might be going a little bit longer. Sorry about that, but hopefully there's value being added to you guys. This is how I do it. I always label these things. Um, I may not always have my heat shrink label maker with me, but I'm always going to be like labeling these somehow. I do that so the person that comes behind me, it doesn't, they don't have to figure it out. Because uh, I know that this is, this is right because my eyeballs went, I energized the circuit and I went and looked and saw what it was. Now I need to verify that the, um, and I can also do that with the continuity test between here and the circuits. Um, it was weird that I was getting continuity on one of these. So that might make me think there may be something wrong here. So maybe a good thing to do would be to do a continuity test on every single one of these things b between each other. Um, maybe there's something going on inside of this part of it. I don't know, but we're going to prove that out. But um, I need to get my little jumper and connect to my battery here to energize this so that I can flip my switches and wet the ends of this and cut it all together. Save everybody some trouble. I've explained what I'm going to do. Now it's time for me to do it. And so when I come back, this will probably be all be mated up to there and we can do a final test and wrap this thing up. All right. So, but if we come across some strange stuff, I'll let you know that too. So let me stop everybody and get busy and all the connections. So here we have all my circuits labeled. I've done the heat shrink. I haven't heat shrunk them yet, but they're all crimped. And then I've got a large piece of um, heat shrink that I will grab this braid, grab it inside the heat shrink and cover all this to here. So it's gonna be nice and protected from the elements. This part of the trailer is gonna get a lot of abuse from road spray. So we wanna make sure that these connections are nice and watertight. Um, so I've made my connection here, okay? And I've got my red light on my box. Um, and I've been playing around with this. If I force the issue, the light turns off, but it, it seems to be, see my little light, it's staying on. Whereas before I was playing around with this thing and just moving it around like that, the light was turning off. So the connections that we've redone seems to have fixed that loose connection problem. I have gotten the light to turn off. I'm talking about this light right here. That's, that's letting me know that the box has got 12 volts. Um, if I force the issue, I can get it to, to, to not illuminate. But um, I think that that problem has been fixed. So here's a moment of truth. What I want to do is move you guys to the back where you were a few minutes ago. And um, I'll come up here and we'll, we'll run the show. I haven't tried it yet. I wanted you to be the beneficiary of, of all my work here. But I'm pretty sure we got it figured out right here. So um, let me move you guys to the back and see what we got. Okay, I got everybody set up in the back. I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch. You're going to find out if this works before I do, but uh, let's see what we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on uh, right blinker because that was the issue. Um, box is blinking quickly. Let's see what we got. So 
<laughs> Outstanding. Okay, because remember that was a problem. It was blinking on the reverse, and uh, we we determined that the reverse and the right, uh, the brown and gray were were mixed up on the front. So that's fantastic. I'm gonna turn right off. Let's go to light show. There we go. Light show is on now. It'll go left, 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 right, 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 just like before. I'm back here with you guys now. Let's see where we at. We're at marker, marker, marker. Let's see here. Uh, okay, pause. Left, 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 right. Ah, there it is. Problems fixed. Right, right, right. Marker, or no, break, break, break. And then marker, marker, marker. And uh, even my, even my uh... okay, so cool. Now, if I do all on, that should turn on all lights, including the backup lights. I haven't checked that yet. So I'm gonna go to all on. Now I see my lights are on up on front. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so it looks like, okay, so on the right, you see how I've got the backup lights, but on the left, not. So at this point, this, uh, only now am I suspecting maybe a burnout bulb, but um, so I'll go in here and see if it's a bulb. Uh, it looks like a, um, the license plate, I got a light bulb burned out right there as well. But uh, I'll check this one. But um, we know that the circuit's correct. So there's a problem there. All right. So, all right, folks, I'm going to wrap this video up right here. You see that um, the, the, the uh, right blinker is obviously working. Um, we could go on and on. But um, my goal for this, my end in mind for this video was that we identified a problem and I wanted to bring you guys along as we follow the trail to find out where the problem is. Honestly, being honest, I thought that there was going to be a problem back here at this socket, at, at this at this fixture. That's where I thought the problem was going to be. Um, when I started this video, didn't even imagine that it was going to be up in the front. But that's where the trail led us. And it was just the gray and the browns. They're very similar in color. I could very easily see how that could have happened. The part that bugs me about whoever did that is they should have checked their work after they made that connection and gone back and seen that oh when i turn the right blinker on the backup light's turning on so shame on them whoever did that there is a big wiring mess here in the back of poppy and um i, I don't you guys don't need to see me do that because it's it's gonna be like a one-off it's not something that we would typically find well <laughs> oh my gosh I, boy did i just tell a big fat lie we find that all the time but um basically i'm going to clean that up strip the wires back put some Mago connectors on there and uh, if I need to make some wires longer but I'm gonna be cleaning up this electrical part in the back it's kind of messy and sloppy that what they've done um, you guys don't need to see me do that my goal for this was to fix this light on the back I still uh, am going to figure out what's going on with this backup light on the left side could be a bulb um, more than likely it's a bulb but um, we know that the circuits going back here so we'll figure that out Hey, if this added value to you, everybody knows a drill. Give us a thumb up. That really helps. Share this with folks that are also having issues with their electrical problem. I hope you enjoyed that little side um, detour that we took to e-trailer. Um, that little um, box that I was using, I am going to be making those. Uh, give me a little bit more time. Um, mine's working fine, but uh, we started that new T3 interface company, and the goal of that is to make tools not unlike that one but the box that i'll be making for you guys we're going to have current and voltage display on it um, those types of things so um, there was a lot of folks asking about that two second on off tool i just showed you the box that i'm doing to do that with but i'm making you guys your very own standalone two second on off tool i'm almost done with it there's just a few more little things that i want to add to that circuit um, i want to be able to clear out the the current when you start it up i want to be have a little button you push to, to clear the thing out to like zero out your meter um, so i'm going to add that circuit to it and then i think it's ready and uh, then i'll put it in a nice little box put a bow on it and it'll be ready for you guys so i'm kind of excited about that one uh, you're seeing us going into more of our t3 interface tools are starting to ramp up a little bit more of my background which is the engineering side of things so this is Darren. I am in Joyce, Washington, and we are having a heat wave right now. I think it's in the upper 70s. I'm thinking about you guys down south, man, and all over the United States, um, even Canada. I'm seeing reports of you guys getting really hot. So um, I don't know. The reason we came up here was the climate. And so we're in the upper 70s. I don't even think we're at 80 degrees right now. But um, I'm thinking of you guys, but I am loving our climate here. So I will 
look forward to seeing you guys on our next video. And until that time, happy camper save my RV works. So I will sign off and bid you a happy trail. All right, bye guys. Thanks for watching.